this week we have another super amazing guest for you. We have the beautiful Elena Bensonoff. Elena is the founder of Holistic, Holistic Quantum Healer Institute, a number one bestseller in holistic medicine and a pioneer in the field of functional, regenerative and quantum medicine. She has been sharing her gift of healing for over 25 years. Her journey began as a clinical pharmacist, then became board certified in functional, regenerative, anti-aging and quantum medicine. Having helped thousands of people all over the world find inner peace, vibrant wholeness, profound healing and help reclaim energy with proven natural programs. Together with her life partner Alejandro Baradas, they created a groundbreaking vibrational frequency system analyzing quantum field using scalar wave technology and reading thousands of people across the globe from historical figures to private clients to help raise the consciousness of humanity. It's now time to tune into this one very inspirational human being. Enjoy. So this morning, or could be this afternoon, depending on what side of the world you're at, we have Alina Bensonoff, and I am super excited because uh, of the topic that we are going to talk today about is probably something that I'm very, very interested in, and I'm sure everybody else will be. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Catherine, for inviting me. So, Elena, just the way that we start the shows, we always love to ask our guests, what's your story? So tell us, how did you get to where you are today? Gosh, where I am today as far as which aspect? <laughs> I guess going into where where do I start? I guess birth is the place, right, where we're born. And, and I think life is, is an ongoing exploration. So as I'm shifting and evolving, therefore everything that I share with the world is also shifting and evolving and it's always an expression of who I am. So I started off, I actually grew up in Kiev, Ukraine, I moved as a teenager with my family to the United States, went to pharmacy school. I've always been fascinated with medicine. I grew up in, in a family and always surrounded by a lot of uh, people in medicine. So whether it's dentistry, emergency room medicine, cardiology, that was kind of always the conversation. I was also extremely sick as a child uh, with uh, either pneumonia, bronchitis, or ear infections. So I always knew that I wanted to go into the realms of medicine. I just was always queasy as far as injections and, and blood. So I decided to go the clean route, what I thought was the clean route. And I went into the world of pharmacy. So I became a pharmacist thinking that it will be the place where I make my magic potions. Well, reality check kicked in and it became very much driven by the, the big pharma. And I realized years working in different settings, whether it's retail or compounding, compounding pharmacy was much more interesting, but I realized really quickly of what I didn't like, of what I didn't resonate with. And in 2007, uh, a friend of mine asked me to join her for a medical fellowship training. And I remember at that time, I, I just my daughter, my youngest was two years old. I had four kids. And I said, I don't know if I want to go back to school. She said, well, just go. It's one of the modules. Maybe you'll like it. And I would say that that was one of the most instrumental awakening points in my life as far as feeling what it, it meant to feel energy, because we are all energy beings, we all feel energy. But when you're trained in a very linear way, right, as far as our education system, which is a global education system, it very quickly disconnects us from, from this other realm that we're all a part of, we're not separate. From. And I remember uh, this cardiologist had us get up uh, in the classroom of about 300 physicians and he said, okay, we're going to practice Qigong. And I remember rubbing my hands together. I don't know if you've ever done this exercise to where you feel the energy flow. And for me, it was like a big light bulb that just went off because I felt and I became so curious and so hungry to explore the other part of myself that I've pushed away for so many years. So Fast forward to, gosh, 2007 till now, how many years is that? Almost 16 years later, I started my own business at that time and never looked back. I've been evolving ever since 
I would say ever since I was born, but much more since 2007. Mm. And so for our audience, what let's unpack what exactly do you do? Because I know you do. I, I've I've looked into it. I have a, a, a small understanding of what you do, but I'd love to hear it from you. What exactly do you do? What exactly do I do? <laughs> Gosh, I've done so many things. Um, right now, currently, there's two aspects to what I do. Number one, of course, I work with people all around the world, optimizing their health and well-being. This is probably the biggest driving force for me, what excites me. Uh, one of the things that excites me every day, uh, and then I started Holistic Quantum Healer Training Program. This is for medical providers, as well as anyone who feels passionate about understanding what it really means to be healthy. So this is one of the most instrumental things in my life at the moment. And then my partner Alejandro and I have created something that's called Vibrational Revelations. And this is a community where we reveal vibrational frequencies of everything you can possibly imagine. We've read thousands of public figures, private clients, uh, historical sites. So this is a lot of fun, kind of big fun project. And it's been teaching us so much about the nature of our reality. And this really started as a project of curiosity initially. Uh, it was part of Tapping into why people are sick and why some people had certain viruses, uh, and this is how we started on that journey, realization that actually our field, our biofield, is a record keeper of all the information. And actually viruses, in most cases, or any kind of chronic conditions, stem from an underlying event that occurs in our life. And we were able to trace it back in every person we have worked with doing their lifetime vibrational frequencies into usually an event that occurs when they're children. So something sets this event and emotion that gets imprinted into the field. And then much later in life, it gets re-anchored, reactivated. And this is why most people become chronically ill. Um, so it started off uh, as a project of trying to get to the root cause of chronic conditions, and it has evolved into something so much bigger and so much more exciting. So how do you, how exactly do you, so there's obviously two areas. I'm, I'm really curious about the quantum medicine, but more so about the vibrational frequency side of things. So when you're tapping into, let's say, um, that frequency that you speak about, that something, a trauma or something that happened when... <clears throat> an individual was a child um, and any sort of virus. So I'm thinking like it could be as simple as, you know, shingles or there, there are many types of viruses. Um, so what, what, what you're saying is once you tap into the root cause of what created this virus, let's say, then what do you do with it? So are you able to measure what is that vibrational frequency? And then how do you then, uh, I guess, increase that vibrational frequency, raise that level of vibration, because I'm, I'm presuming that would be a low vibrational frequency. So how do you work with that to uh, remove it altogether? Mm -hmm. So it, not necessarily all viruses are low vibrational frequencies. Some viruses are higher vibrational frequencies, and they're here to teach us something about who we are. And we'll give an example of Epstein-Barr. So Epstein-Barr on a scale of zero to a thousand vibrates at a frequency of 400, which is pretty high. Uh, so, and actually that was the virus that we were able to tap into. So it's never a, a where I am the person that's going to fix the problem, right? So it's a multifactorial process. And this is always, always in every case. Every case is an individual case. It depends on the situation of what the person has been through. So for example, if a person comes in and they're interested in having their lifetime frequencies read, we can go through their entire life and give, give them the information. If they're coming to us from an angle of this is my physical issue, chronic condition, and I haven't been able to clear it, then of course the entire system has to be addressed. It's a holistic system. So from a frequency perspective, you cannot just go in because there's lots of gadgets on the market right now that claim just by pushing a button, you erase something from the field. There is no such thing. And this is what I call the bypassing, whether it's spiritual bypassing, physical bypassing, there is no button that you can push uh, to create uh, vibrational frequencies that are going to bypass your mindset, 
your diet that also impacts uh, how you're feeling. So again, it's really where I would dive into a person using different types of systems, whether it's applied kinesiology, which is one of the systems I would use to test the physical system. We also use scalar wave technology to test people. And then once we create a customized protocol, that means what are some of the emotional blockages? What are some of the inflammatory processes in the body? What is creating the inflammation? Fixing the gut, supporting the adrenals, the liver, right? The, the lymphatic system. And then working on perhaps the virus from a physical angle and then from a frequency perspective where we can create sessions to support the body's innate ability to heal itself. And this is the key for most people to remember, to remember no one can heal us that we are our own healers and the practitioners that you seek have to be well-versed in the holistic quantum approach. That means they have to understand how your physical system works, how your mind works, and then also understanding the frequencies. Mm, and I love that. It's so true. You can't just, it's not, a, and everyone's up for, after a quick fix, aren't they? Whether it's, mm -hmm. a, you know, a, a, some sort of device or a tablet that's going to fix me up. And I love the, the approach because it is a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual body. We have many layers to work through. It's not just the one. I love that because I actually, when I was looking at your website, I was looking at some of the things that we don't even consider some of the things that, the, I, I guess, the there's so many uh, chemicals uh, in the in the food that we eat, in the environment, in the make, like, in the things like makeup and things that we wear, that we are not consciously aware of, or not even consciously that they have an impact on our well being. Uh, so I love that you really do uh, approach it in a very holistic way. Yeah. So yes. there is. So what's a scalar? You mentioned about scalar. What is that? What exactly is that? So there's many, again, I don't know the, the types of how many devices there are, but there are certain devices on the market where is it's required, you need a practitioner to sit and actually read another person's field, right? So it's a device. So when I do medical kind of evaluations, it's it's where I'm reading your blueprint and what is happening acutely in your system. And it can go all the way down to your DNA. So I'm able to, gosh, look at over 140,000 things. Of course, I'm not going to look at all of them, but you know, generally we'll look at things. And then if there is massive imbalances, we're going to break it down and go all the way into your cells and your mitochondria. Um, and then based on that, I can custom create sessions for a person uh, who is needing specific rebalancing or reharmonizing of their biofield and their physical system. But it's always, always has to be supported by physically changing things in their life. So oftentimes, as I said, you hear people say, oh, you know, I'm sending sessions to you or let me do long distance healing, which I think is beautiful. But again, if the person's other aspects of physicality are not addressed. What are they eating on daily basis to create inflammatory inflammation in their body? I don't care how many scalar sessions or long distance energy sessions you send, it is just not going to work because ultimately people go back and to the same habits. So habits have to change. There's many, many different aspects that have to be addressed. So that's looking at the physical. Now the vibrational revelations when Alejandro and I work, um, we do use uh, several devices to read people and it, it takes two of us. So where for the medical aspect is just me sitting with the device and, and uh, working with the person's field for vibrational revelations, for the, reading the frequencies and doing lifetime, it takes the two of us doing it. And there's several steps involved. So it's it's just a different process altogether. Because mm, I did see the um, you were, there's uh, a, 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 like a, a almost like a an anatomy inside out of a like there was a picture and I saw you tapping on a certain picture with I think a pendulum it was and you've got it yeah. looked like you had flowers essences or or I don't know there was little tubes. So those are things. separate things. Yeah, those are separate things. So. Essences is, uh, gosh, I've also, because I've worked in a compounding pharmacy, we can go back so people understand why I also make products. I've actually created over a hundred products for myself and other, other companies, other people, other businesses. Uh, it, so what compounding pharmacy is, do you know what that is? Catherine? Yeah, I use, that's okay. what I use. That's, I don't use, yeah. I don't, so I'm, I'm where, very big on natural medicine. Yes. It's where you actually can have a pharmacist custom make 
products for you. So what was happening is I had my huge aha moment in 2007 when I realized that there's a lot of chemicals that are being mixed into products that people think are custom made. And actually they're also, they can also be very harmful. I remember pulling a bottle and it had BHT on the label with the skull and bones. For those people that don't know, BHT is butylated hydroxytoluene and it's said hepatotoxic, so toxic to the liver. I could not believe it. I was actually putting it into the products and lozenges as well. So topical products, right? And knowing what I knew at that time also that uh, when you take something orally, only less than 10% gets absorbed because it bypasses the digestive system. When you apply products topically, uh, about 90% of it gets absorbed because you bypass the digestive system. So it doesn't break down through your digestion. It goes directly through the skin into the bloodstream. So it, it is, therefore, you need a lot less of a dose for you, probably if you're doing like progesterone, right? A lot of women will take topical progesterone, topical hormones. So it was a big aha moment. Wow, if I'm putting this toxic ingredient into the product, which by the way, is most compounding pharmacies do, unless you ask them to substitute, but it's it's a much more complicated topic. Uh, I began to investigate and, and also I was interested in creating my own natural line, which I no longer carry, but I did a lot of lectures back in 2007 through 10, educating people on how important it is to pay attention to the ingredients of the products that you apply topically, which most people actually disconnect as the two, right? Because our skin is our biggest digestive organ. And so from that point on, I, I've created many, many products, including probably something that you saw me recently post, which is the holistic chakra system. And I just release it a couple of times a year uh, because I blend it myself. So that's what you saw. As far as the pendulum, I don't use pendulum for mental testing, but this is actually part two that I'm going to release for people who are training with me uh, through the holistic quantum healer training. So first you learn in person how to test people and, and create protocols. And then part two, which is the second year, is long distance testing. Um, so that's where you see all the charts coming in and you can be extremely precise from your home, from your office, from anywhere, and you can help so many people. That's amazing. I love it. And so are you able to, from a vibrational frequency, are you able um, to identify uh, a person's consciousness? So are you oh. able to test, the, you know, you're out of whatever. Uh, it could be that, because uh, I can see that you have different range of um from victimization to activation inspiration I, I had a look at that so are you able to to tap into somebody's vibrational frequency oh yes that's exactly what Alejandro and I do together so we actually look at over 36 parameters for each person uh we've done it publicly so you can see some of the episodes we've done uh, on YouTube and then, of course, we have over a library of over 150 episodes, which is covering so many different people throughout history, including famous people now who are alive, where we look at, for example, your overall vibrational frequency, frequency of how you incarnate, frequency of how you're born, which in most cases we see a vibrational frequency drop, emotions that impacted that drop in utero, meaning what your mom experienced, what emotions were they, and of course, they become yours. We look at how you perceive relationships, personal growth, creativity, finances, um, philanthropy, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, your IQ, uh, your EQ, your SQ, AQ, I mean, you name it, absolutely, we can see it all. Uh, your health, which is another important aspect, and we are, we're able to even go into body, mind, and soul and see how do you relate to your mind, you know, how do you relate to your body, uh, how do you perceive your soul? Like, what is the connection? So, yes, we're reading consciousness of, of people and also places. That's amazing. So when you're talking of places, can you do it from a collective uh, perspective? Could you say that, let's say, especially, I'm, I'm curious, obviously, because of the last couple of years of what we've experienced, yes. I'm sure you would have seen the the, the shift in consciousness from, let's say, 2021, 2022. Are you able to project 
and see what's going or well, what's coming in 2023 from a consciousness oh, yes. perspective. We did an entire episode on it already. It's been released, I believe, in December of 2022. We released and we went month by month of what's hap- what's going to happen with the human collective consciousness. So right before the pandemic, human consciousness, I want to say was about 2.30. Uh, we took a big nosedive. Uh, in uh, mid-2021, where we went collectively into absolute victimization. Uh, and this is what I call the karmic trauma of fear at 100. So human collective took a nosedive to fear and it became so obvious, right? Yeah. So just keep in mind that this is, of course, not every human being. This is us collectively and we're not separate from one another. So it's important, even if you're not feeling that way, that you're living your life through fear, I'm sure there's aspects of it that will show up in your life, whether it's your, through your loved ones or whatever it is that might be triggering. In 2022, the frequency of the human collective went into 125. And a year before that, we actually did an entire episode where we've looked at different world events throughout history, World War I, French Revolution, Russian Revolution, World War II, um, Great Depression. And we saw that it was actually the same vibrational frequency of 125. Uh, so there was a lot of unrest right around the world also linked to similar patterns that we've experienced as as a human collective before. And then this year coming up, there's going to be definitely changes happening. Uh, There is an episode perhaps you can link in your show notes where we go month by month and we're going to go into the frequency of 150. So it's going to be a rise and 150 is anger, it's rage. Uh, And this is oftentimes needed in order for us to really make a change in our life, to create a shift, right? And and then by the end of the year, we're shifting into 175, where we actually collectively care what other people think about us, right? And that's that prideful kind of vanity uh, frequency. So this is interesting because now we're coming out of that the lower frequencies and we're learning something together as species because we can't separate. I mean, now more than ever, since everything is so connected with the pandemic every single part of the world has been impacted, right? Every human being, whether we wanted to or not, whether we feel it impacted us or not, but it really has. Uh, So it gave us an an amazing opportunity to really go within, deep within, and really look in the mirror, the mirror inside. And I would say that all the triggers that we felt collectively is a huge opportunity for growth for Mm -hmm. every one of us on this planet. So how does that work? Because I know, look, I know from a collective uh, perspective, there's also been a great divide that's taken place. And I'm, I'm, I'm a true believer in what you're saying. We are one, we are, um, and that's why I always, I, 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 I guess with my, my, um, my way of thinking, I just always say, see, see and say to myself, why can't we all just understand we're all here to learn We're all the same. We're all souls having a human experience and we're all of love and light and truth. And so sometimes it just does my head in like, how do we get to this where there's this separation? But it's almost like we need, like you were saying before, we need anger or we need the separation because this is how everybody cracks open to Mm -hmm. a new way of seeing or new way of being. So what are your thoughts about are we going to, going to be coming back together, even though we are whole? I've, absolutely, we are one. But how do you see that coming back together? Yes. So duality or what you call polarity exists throughout all of creation. In fact, creation is experiencing itself, whether you are in the light or in the dark. It's part of everything. And without having people that drop into those lower frequencies, people that perhaps create pain for many of us, right, and chaos, we wouldn't have the opportunity to rise in the light, okay? And so what Alejandra and I realized over the last three to four years is instead of calling certain lower vibrational frequencies the shadow, right, we decided that actually they are what we call the great awakeners. And those great awakeners have existed throughout history, throughout all different realms. It's sort of like if you walk into the room and everything is always white, you would never be able to appreciate color. You would never be able to appreciate uh, the flavors that we all have. And 
it's giving us an opportunity to not focus on the divide, but focus on what can you find that unites us together. And unfortunately, there has been such a massive divide into who is right and who is wrong. You know, these are the bad guys and I'm the good guy. Well, there's very few people on this planet that have taken the middle road. And this is what I think is needed at this time. In order to unite, we cannot point fingers at somebody else and not take the full responsibility for every thing that happens in our own life mm -hmm. and this middle ground is extremely important so i am the person that tends to be in the middle uh, i'm not interested in pointing fingers and and saying oh it's so and so's fault and so and so's fault so are we going to rise yes is the shadow going to always exist yes but there's going to be enough uh, of the consciousness rising where it's going to create a shift. But again, what we've seen, because we've done a whole episode on different generations, it is a new generation that is here. They're called the alpha generation. I think they're born starting in 2000, either 12 or 13. I can't remember right now. But they're the ones that are absolutely unique compared to all the previous generations on this planet. They came with a much higher vibrational frequency of overall frequency of 500. So they also tend to, based on the things that we've read, they come here with a totally different, different karmic blueprint. So we and the previous generations before us have a lot more karma to work through. And this is perhaps what we're doing at the moment. Because the new, younger generation coming in, they're just, I don't know if you have the ability to be around younger kids, they're so different and they're just pure light and they come knowing, right? They're, they're connected, they get it. So this is really where the shift is going to happen because there's going to be more and more of them being born and think they're until the year 2025. And then the older generations are kind of going to... Uh, leave this reality. So the change that we started to see, the big, big change will be 2045 and 2046. And this is the two years where we'll have this massive consciousness rising. But until that point, we are in the learning phase. And one of our friends, actually, astrologer that we do shows with Astrolata, she said, we're in the teenage phase right now. So we're the rebels uh, collectively. Yeah, I so agree. And when you were talking about shadow work, I'm big on shadow work. I've been doing that for years. It's so true. You you can't experience courage without experiencing fear. And you can't experience what light is without being in that the depth of the darkness. You know, I call it the dark night of the soul, which um I think it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because I discovered me and what was holding me back as well. So if sometimes we need to go there, we need to experience the dark. And it's true. It's one of those things that it will never go away. It's not about running away from the shadow. It's how do we embrace it? And I'm big on um, what you're saying. Like I'm very big on not taking sides. I'm always centering myself. I actually uh, do not watch the news and a listener's probably sick of me saying I don't listen to the radio because I am conscious about my vibrational frequency because I'm an empath. So I... Uh, intuitively if I hear things that are going on I'll then feel sympathy and empathy for others and and that and it was one of those things that will just can you know uh, keep me up at night you know because I want to know how can I help them but all I do is I do my best to keep my vibes high and I'd like to hear it from you I remember reading an article once that, and I can't remember who, whether there was a neuroscientist or someone that was into quantum physics, was saying that it takes like 1% of the population to, ha to, to have a really high vibrational frequency because when we have enough, only a small percentage, the low vibrational frequency can either um, are, are lifted by this high vibration they can no longer, you know, uh, exist in this kind of lower vibrational frequency. I'm probably not doing it justice, but I hope you know what I'm talking about. I know what Is you're that... talking about. Uh, so let me just go back to something that you said. It's very important. And I would say it's part of the old paradigm, actually, to where 
we give our responsibility away to something outside of ourselves is going to lift our vibrational frequency. So it goes back to that spiritual bypassing. Okay. I'm not a fan of that. And the reason is there is no button you can push, as we said, <laughs> that is going to raise your vibration. Counting on somebody else coming here to rescue us is also spiritual bypassing. So this is a big news maybe for some people, but it's important to where we claim our own sovereignty in the way we live our life and the way we perceive reality. Just thinking that my neighbor is going to be at 500 frequency and he's going to raise my vibration, guess what? He's not going to raise your vibration because you're not doing the work. You're not claiming your own responsibility. Again, when you give your power away, that means you're in the frequencies of zero to 199, what we call victimization. So to answer that question, I would say it's an old paradigm that is based on the belief system that somebody outside of ourselves is going to raise us, an event is going to happen to raise our vibrational frequency. There's a button that I can push that's also going to bypass and magically I'm going to be a high vibe person. Mm, I hope that answer. I know it's not an answer that most people want to hear. It does. It does because it's like, and that that goes back to some of the conversations I had just a a week ago. There's so many rabbit holes out there, and some people get uh, uh, stuck in the rabbit hole, like waiting for someone to save them. And I always say, go within. Like, turn your 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 vision. Turn within yourself. That is how you're going to. Uh, increase your vibrational frequency but not only that like if you're too preoccupied with what's going on external of you the best way to help what is going on is going within to increase from within you can't do it from without because you're actually giving your power away or you're giving your light away by focusing everything external of yourself yes yeah so i'm curious apart from food what are some other ways that we can uh, raise a vibrational frequency I I know there's it's some people talk about um, using daily uh, mindfulness meditation uh, using uh, binaural beats what are some ways that we could increase apart from the physical uh, you know the environment the physical what are some ways that we could increase a vibrational frequency so I think the most important thing to do is to focus on what brings you joy and what inspires you. Because when we are in a state of inspiration, which is connecting to that childlike essence that we are all part of, it's part of who we are, but mindfully connecting to that. That means if you're going on a walk, perhaps take your headphones off and begin to notice things around you from a state of awe. And that means looking at the sky and it's recognizing that it's blue, paying attention to the bird sounds. I think connection to nature is one of the best ways to raise our vibrational frequency. Again, feeling inspired, listening to music. You don't have to meditate. There's so many different ways to meditate, but ultimately it's it's an opportunity to go within. You can do chants. There's so many, like we did a public episode on Gayatri Mantra, which is a frequency of 1,000. So if you can chant that, really connect it to it, right? That's just a powerful way to to shift. Um, I am saying I am. I am vibrates at a frequency of 1,000. So you could say I'm love. I am peace. And you can say it quietly, but I I believe that our words are so powerful. And it is about creating a vibration through the sound. You can use... Uh, crystal sound bowls, that's another way, right? Sound healing is powerful. Uh, Water, water is a beautiful way to connect. Also, when you're doing affirmations, you can do it in the shower. Why? Because water amplifies and it purifies. Uh, Blessing your food, blessing Mm -hmm. your water, you can imprint things. So there's dancing, how about that? There's so many different ways of raising your vibration, learning something new that excites you. So so I'm curious. Obviously, you do this all the time. Do you ever uh, – we're humans, right? So obviously there will be moments where you're probably feeling a bit stuck or um, – feeling maybe uh you know a little bit snappy you might be angry like do you do you actually experience those those of sensations? Course. yes oh yes okay so, and and so do you, are you able to snap yourself out of it like be conscious or does it take a little while before you go oh hang on a minute i'm actually experiencing 
uh, anger or I'm experiencing sadness or I'm experiencing fear? <laughs> Uh, I think it happens to all of us. Um, that is what being human is. For me, exercise is an important way to also clear my energy, exercise and music. So I have to usually consciously, if I don't go on a walk, I would go to the gym and move my body for 30 minutes. And that is a magic trick, listening to some kind of music. I also have a way of dealing with things where I don't like to bathe in the negative. So I'm the person that just kind of forgets and moves on. Depending, of course, on the emotions, you know, like grief, um, that's a tough one. You know, when you lose a love, loved one in your life, and I know people say you don't really lose them, but yes, you do, because in many ways, you know, I lost my mom five years ago. You can, I can connect with her and I can feel her, but you still miss that physical aspect. And I do go through waves of grief. Mm. And that's just part of who we all are, you know, for those of us that have had this tremendous loss in our life. Uh, anger I'm not an angry person <laughs> but uh, I can get in my head so sometimes you know we go I go through moments of where I go in my head and I start overthinking and this is where I know okay time to really either go outside for a walk or move or, or turn the music on to just release the thought yes Mm, yeah, I do that. I overprocess, overthink. And I think one of the things that I do, I journal a lot, but I just try to drop into my heart as often as possible because when I get stuck in my mind, I can create uh, mountains out of molehills. What about yeah. guilt? I know, and this is one of the things that I find that a lot of, especially women, um, and I don't know if, if you can probably link this into some of your research, but guilt is uh, guilt and shame. Uh, and I just, I remember um, not that long ago, I interviewed someone and she was saying, what do you feel guilty for? What have you done to feel guilty for? And I was like, but that is a default position of mine. For example, if I um, think about myself too much in the sense of doing something, how would that impact others around me? You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. I think it's a mother thing. Um, what are your thoughts about guilt and shame? Yes. Like it's a default position. Yes. One thing I forgot to mention also is how important breath is. And that also brings me back into being centered is just taking a deep breath in. But as far as guilt and shame, it's no longer part of my conversation. It used to be uh, when I was a young mom and I held myself back for years from doing what I really wanted to do. So I was working. I was a working mom. Uh, and it was always a balance of how much do I allow myself and my career to grow because I felt that my kids needed me. And again, I had four kids uh, within seven years or six years and nine months, I had four kids. Uh, so it was a constant guilt. I would say guilt. I didn't, I don't think I had shame, but guilt was a big thing. And I think it's also part of uh, the structures of how I grew up, right? And and then having a conversation from my grandmother, I remember when I took with my youngest, my daughter, she was she was born, she was my fourth child. And I remember staying home with her. It was just so overwhelming, you know, to have to breastfeed and deal with like really being a chauffeur because as moms, we wear so many hats, right? Cooking and driving and everything, doing homework with the kids. And my grandmother, who was an overachiever herself, kept calling me every day and saying, you should not be staying at home. You need to go back to work. So she was definitely guilt, guilt tripping me into why I made the decision for two years to stay at home. Uh, and that was the replay, the conversation that was playing constantly. The other guilt that I experienced is when I made a shift to leave the world of pharmacy, the traditional world of pharmacy into uh, the quantum energy. And I remember a lot of my family members were so against it and there was a lot of guilt. What do you mean you're giving up, you know, to, to do what? Uh, so this was a conversation in my head that was playing over and over and over for many, many years that created doubt uh, within myself, but somehow my conviction was so strong <laughs> that it overrode everything else. And it no longer is part of that conversation for me, but it has been for many, many years. And look at you now. Look at what you've achieved. It's amazing. 
So I know our listeners are probably really curious as to where would they start with you? Because we talked about vibrational frequencies. We talk about quantum medicine. Like what would be the best starting point for our viewers? Well, if you're looking into health and wellness, I would say I have a free masterclass. It's a wonderful class. In fact, I had somebody last week that reached out to me. She said she bought my eight-week program. And then she said, oh, after taking the masterclass, she figured out what her food allergy was and her headache is gone. And I'm like, great. So I would say free masterclass is a great starting point if you really want to understand body, mind, and soul connection. I'm actually teaching in that class how to eliminate certain things, you know, from a dietary perspective into balancing your gut, your liver, and then going into soul aspect, sacred geometry, we go into belief systems and testing your own belief systems. So that's one one aspect. If you want to understand yourself from a consciousness perspective, that would be the vibrational frequency analysis. And I will say that is probably the most life-changing thing you can do because it's one thing what we think of ourselves, but it's a whole other level of when you're given a report of where you stand. It's sort of like going to the doctor and getting your blood work done, right? But mm-hmm. this is, of course, doesn't involve needles, uh, but it's looking into your persona self of where you stand from 36 different categories and then in most cases people say to us that that creates a massive change in their life because you can no longer view your life through the same lens once you know there's no way to unknow what you know yeah once you see it's hard to unsee so from a consciousness wouldn't that impact all levels of uh, you know from your physical to your mental your emotional if you're working at that higher consciousness sounds like it's a kind of a bigger bigger job It is a bigger job, but let's say out of 36 categories, maybe you have two categories that are in the lower vibrational range. It could be your relationships or health. So this way, you know, ah, okay, what is what is my pattern and what is the why behind why I view that aspect of my life? Let me give you an example. We Mm -hmm. had actually quite a few people that have their own medical practices or healing centers, and they have vibrational frequency of 100 under the aspect of health. And I remember this one uh, doctor said to me, I've had a very successful medical practice for 35 years. My patients love me. I'm doing great. I don't understand why and how it could be at this frequency. So Alejandro said to him, okay, let's go back to when you decided to be a doctor. What was the why behind you made that decision? And he sat for a moment and then he said, oh, I know. I was in a horrible car accident when I was 17 years old. I was in a hospital for two months. I couldn't move. I thought I'll be paralyzed for the rest of my life. And I made a decision that I never want to feel this way. And this is the reason I went to medical school. So his decision of when he made the decision to go to medical school stemmed from a vibrational frequency of fear versus Mm -hmm. I love medicine and I love humanity and I'm going to to go into medicine because of love. So there's different reasons of why we make the decisions that we do and the conversations behind it. And oftentimes those conversations are long forgotten, but that frequency stays unless we make a conscious decision to shift it. So then what happens? So obviously then he, he make the connection that, oh my gosh, I got into this field because based on fear, I didn't, you know, whatever that may be, the story was. So what, what do you do then with that information once you're aware that this is the consciousness that I'm... Yeah, so you, you can know, actually yeah. reprogram yourself to and begin to pay attention to the conversations that are happening on a very subtle level on a day-to-day basis. So first it's paying attention to what it is that's carrying a charge and it could be extremely quiet. So that's number one. Number two, uh, most people will end up working with Alejandro. He's actually getting ready to launch this year a six-month program to where he takes people on this journey of raising the vibrational frequency and doing step-by-step work of releasing the limiting beliefs. Uh, But it is about paying attention to, to the conversation that you have. And let's say, for example, in your chart, you have a vibrational frequency Uh, related to personal growth of let's say 500 this is your flow state where the rest of the numbers could be just kind of all over the place what we usually say is pay attention to how that feels that 500 feels because it's a lot easier to recreate that feeling and kind of sprinkle it throughout the rest of the chart 
Mm. Right? Because you have to focus on what brings you joy, not on the negative conversations that you have. So if we go back to the the gentleman you were speaking about from a fear perspective, yes. connecting it and, and healing that part of, of, of um, I guess, his blueprint, um, what impact would that have on his business? Would that, or in his life, would that mean that now that he has an understanding of why he got into what he got into was not of the love of humanity, but more so the drive of fear, what do you do? You, did, did he pack up and change his career, or did he continue or shift his his um, his uh, I guess his focus to moving away from fear but moving to love, or what was the outcome? Yes. So I mean, this is I gave an example of an extremely complicated story because he actually ended up losing his medical license, um, and uh, so there's a lot of a lot of points that had to connect uh now he's shifted into more natural holistic approach right and i haven't followed through with him since the last time we had a conversation but actually it led him to initially when we met him he didn't give us the information of him losing the medical license this is something he shared with us much later Mm. so i'm sure it's also connected to that frequency yeah, so I'm just looking at obviously there's patterns that could potentially if you, you know, even like if something happened, some sort of trauma happened as a child. And for example, I, t- I talk about, um, you know, you can look down your timeline and then you can have a look at yes. these repeating patterns and that should oh, give yeah. you a clue as to what has taken place in your imprinting phase for you to repeat these patterns and what can we now do differently to stop, you know, these, these same, pa- same patterns uh, taking yeah. place in our future. It, and so from a vibrational frequency, would that apply apply in the same rule from a, you look at the patterns? Absolutely. Yes. So not only do we look at all the vibrational frequency numbers, we actually, part two of it would be doing your lifetime analysis. And this is where we look from birth until let's say you're 50 years old. So we can look at your entire life. And this is part of uh, some of the vibration revelations library that we have, we have, I believe, at least seven or eight episodes with our members who courageously share their stories and their entire lifetime frequencies. They have booked it with us and then they share the stories. So what we do when we look at somebody's lifetime, we look at, uh, let's say a person is born at the frequency of 50, right? And they experience that frequency until for some people, it could be first 20 to 40 years of their life, or they go like a roller coaster, right? They go up and down, up and down. And we usually read the frequencies of the drop. And then we expand those drops. Let's say you had a drop when you were, let's say, 15 years old, or maybe five years old. And we look into the event situations and emotions that occurred at that time that were imprinted, because it's not the rising up that helps you understand yourself better, but actually what is it that happened when you were really deep, deep in, you know, in the frequency drop, because this is the pattern, unless it's healed, is going to repeat itself over and over and over over. And usually what we see is if it happens between five and 10 years old, it will repeat itself until the person has a shift an awakening of like, aha, now I got it, right? So people will say, why is it that I keep attracting the same type of person into my life? Why is it that I have the same kind of situation just through different characters in my life? And it has to do with an unhealed part of who we are and what happened to us as children. So yes, mm-hmm. we can see through lifetime patterns. And then obviously you then work through whatever that is, the, the, the trauma, whatever the person experienced, then they have obviously a great way to have a breakthrough, work through the the shadow whatever i guess uh needs to come out and then obviously these patterns stop repeating yes Amazing. but in most cases what we have seen because people will come to us they're already really aware of of kind of everything they have they're going through when we see people go from 50 or 100 frequency into 200 and above people will say to us, I feel like I'm enlightened. And this is why we took the term enlightenment out of our scale, because you can feel enlightened at any frequency throughout your life. And it is such a massive journey to go from victimization into this activation phase. And it does feel like you've climbed the biggest mountain. We call it the Mount Everest, you know, and you just kind of this 250 frequency oftentimes represents climbing this Mount Everest and finally giving yourself the permission to 
put your winds down and just enjoy the view. And this is why the 250 frequency is such a powerful frequency for many, many people who overcome the 50 and 100 throughout their life. And this is most human beings. And what is required is extreme compassion compassion for your own journey and never ever comparing your own vibrational frequency and your own journey to anyone else's because it is unique to you you come here to work through your own karmic cycle through your own life lessons and guess what you at 250 feel enlightened and somebody else at 500 will feel enlightened and this is why everyone oftentimes this spiritual path is represented by a staircase and I love that representation because we have our own staircase to climb. We have our own mountains to climb. And when you begin to open your heart and have the compassion for yourself, this is the only way you'll have compassion for other people. Mm, 100%. I always say that how can you love others if you don't love yourself? And how can you be compassionate with others if you can't can you be compassionate with yourself? So I'm sure, um, Alina, you must have a lot of people come to you and say, I don't know what my purpose in life is. Can you help me? Really? Yes, we can talk about that. Um, well, first of all, we read alignment with your divine purpose and alignment with personal purpose. And those are two completely different things because oftentimes people will say to us that alignment with divine purpose is their favorite number to know. And divine purpose is, Alejandro likes to describe it. It's like you go through life and the script, the divine script, pages of it are being revealed to you one day at a time and personal purpose has to do with your personality so divine is your soul the person personal growth your alignment with that is more of your persona self your ego that wants to know so sometimes we don't we don't have a sense or we don't know if you're on the right path i would say if you're still seeking that means most likely you're not walking your divine path and that is okay. And the way to connect to your divine path is to allow yourself to experience more inspiring moments because when you feel inspired and you connect to the joy, it will bring you closer to your divine path, aligning with your divine path, whatever that might be. And for some of us, it might be going to pharmacy school initially, and then it's shifting into the quantum realms. And maybe then it's about blending products. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be defined as long as you feel inspired and excited to wake up every morning looking forward to, I can't wait because mm -hmm. I love being here. I'm excited to be here. So it's not so much what it is, but how does it make you feel? Yeah, 100%. And you can now look back in life and go, I now I know why I did pharmacy and did it. Because it's yes. all linked, if you look at it, really, from where you are where you are today to what yeah. you've achieved. It's all, to me, it's all, it was all meant to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Alina, I am conscious of your time. And um, and uh, I could have you here for another two hours because I'm sure um, our listeners, our viewers are very curious, just like me, to find out a lot more. But we'll have everything in the show notes. The way that we wrap up the shows, we always love to ask our guests, uh, what would be three shiny gold nuggets or practical tips that you would like to leave for our viewers and listeners today? Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, connect to what inspires you, to what brings you joy. Connect to beauty. I think beauty is key, whether it's listening to music or, or just noticing the beauty around you and stay compassionate. Mm, thank you. Three very simple, and I like that, simple, easy to do things on a daily basis. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and sharing your wealth of wisdom. This has been really interesting, fascinating. I mean, I'm so interested to find out more. So thank you. And I know people will reach out to you. So thank you so much for your time and your energy today. Thank you so much, Catherine. This was fun. Thank you.